uh, my pet peeve tonight, and it was very disappointing. It didn't matter which way it went, it just showed that not enough people got out. And, uh, and, that, and that, that bothered me very much when I, when I saw that uh, uh, in, in this morning. So uh, apathy is ruling in New London, and it shouldn't, and if you want change, so. I think the awareness of the homeless community in New London has definitely been raised this year, even with our yeah, volunteer I check the here, first. and also at the shelter, we have a group of cadets that goes at least once a week to the shelter on Thursday nights, and just, you know, people talking with each other about it has really brought that to people's attention, but it could always be better. Yeah, there could always be more involvement and more people that know about it. Do you guys feel connected to the community more by doing stuff like this? Absolutely, because if not, you just go to school and you do your everyday routine. And Essentially, there, there is um, some fairly strong opposition to what we're doing, um, particularly on the city council, and I'm sure in the general public. And it, it revolves around this, um, this sense that by providing shelter, number one, you run the risk of attracting, so to speak, homeless people from throughout the region to New London. And there is a sense that New London is already the host for a whole variety of social programs. And that, that has some toll on the city. And so there's a fear that what we're doing is um, attracting people who would not otherwise be to New London. The second, I think, uh, is sort of a philosophical uh, sense that we're enabling, that by providing a person who's abusing alcohol or drugs with a, you know, a place to sleep at night, we're enabling their addiction. And essentially, all I answer to that is that's one theory, the kind of the tough love theory of how you approach uh, alcohol or substance abuse. But what I just try to keep coming back to is that the research shows over and over across studies all over this country that engagement is the most effective way to get people onto treatment. And so my view is so long as someone isn't going to hurt anybody else, I believe that people are better off inside a shelter where we can talk to them in the morning when they wake up about treatment, where we can keep them safe where we can prevent them from continuing to drink because once you come into the shelter, which has to be by nine o'clock, you can't continue to drink. So, but we had a very contentious uh, debate about that and um, for a period of time, the city council required us to use a breathalyzer and uh, check everybody as they came in and exclude people with a blood alcohol level above uh, 0.08. So that was a difficult phase. Um, we, you know, we, we got through it. And for the winter, they suspended that. And I'm just you know, hoping somehow with, with continuing education, people can see that everyone, the intoxicated person and the general public is better off to let them be here and to let us try to work with people. But how that will play out, I guess time will tell. What I see is a lot of people that have good hearts a lot of people from the surrounding towns that do volunteer and if they come to the soup kitchen for an hour or two they then drive back to Essex or Lyme or East Lyme or Storrington and and they feel they you know they feel good about what they've done what they don't see is the the people that are hanging around in the storefronts uh, the people that are waiting for the soup kitchen to open uh, the people that have a mental illness that have you know have nowhere to go um, and they're screaming at themselves walking down the street. Um, they don't see the drinking in public while in between, you know, feeding time. And, you know, they don't see that part because they're gone. They're back home. And that's what we see and live with every day. Um, there's always been a resistance in Connecticut to regionalization and our governor just put forth a budget that does try to address some of that. I disagree with a lot of what she's suggesting, but absolutely we should be talking more about sharing services. We already do that, but we do that to the uh, deficit of the larger cities. There are um, organizations, say out in the eastern part of the state, that will give a bus ticket to someone who's homeless. They'll give a bus ticket to Hartford thinking that Hartford's homeless services are sufficient to bear this burden, this weight. 
They are not. The shelters are absolutely full. I was just at one on Friday where they have 30 more people than their fire code allows. They're putting them in the floors. And the fire marshal tries to be kind about this, but it's a hazard. Where else do these people go? What ought to happen, and what has happened in some larger towns, not quite cities in Connecticut, is that they will bill the town for the Colchester person coming to stay in a Middletown shelter. And Colchester will give money to that city because it's everyone's problem. And you can't hope that just by giving them a bus ticket, you've taken care of it. And in fact, there's homelessness in every town of any size. We just don't have to see it in my town in Marlboro. We just don't have to look at it. I don't know if they're getting bus tickets to Hartford, but we're not really dealing with it. And I applaud states where there's not this feudal system of, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Manchester, therefore I don't have to think about East Hartford, which is the next town over. In fact, you do. It's not like they have to cross a moat to get to your town. <laughs> you know, in the same social ills that are in our capital, fan out. You know, the, the Homeless Hospitality Center has a budget of almost $500,000. I mean, there's staff that are paid and they're employees. So when you have public hearings, the, most of the people that are coming are the people that are fearful that they may lose their job, um, which, is a, which is something that should be looked into. Uh, there are people making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. And, you know, that could be, that becomes an industry then. Um, I, I, don't, I don't believe that uh, the basement of a church is going to work in the long term. I think it's a temporary fix. Um, I think people need help. I think people need to be challenged. Um, and then the people that can't be helped, can't be challenged, or are not willing to play, then the state, I think, needs to really take a hold of them and really, you know, put them in a facility where they're not going to harm themselves or someone else. Because truly, that that does happen, and, and you know, I'd hate to be a supporter of that. I read about a lot of that stuff, and then I always went back to the Bible because I read Mark, and then I read, and I read Acts, and I said, God, these people are all, you know, you need to get the prophet clowns out of there, like uh, the greedy guys that, oh yeah, let's put up a, you know, let's put up a, 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 a project so we all can make money in the cement people and everything, and and and, and rent to these people, not let them own. That's baloney. You need the ports, it's their place, they need to be taught the economics of it, and if everybody puts it in, this stuff works. But then again, this is leans towards socialism. That's what you're talking about, okay, in those definitions, when you talk about Ingalls and Marx and everything else. I mean, I could, you know, there's a part of me that's a business person, obviously organized, I come out of organized crime, I'm an entrepreneur and everything, so there's a part of me that has that in me, this works. No, they don't hurt our business at all. I think they're very nice people. Yeah. I mean, they come in and, um, you know, they, they live in shelters, and I guess they're not allowed to stay in there all day. They have to get out yeah. of the day, so they need some places to go. I see they collect cans or, you know, come on sure. in. And they're very nice people. As somebody who, like, eats in shops down here, do you ever get hassled by homeless people? Me no, I don't no. I talk to them; they're fine with me. They, yeah. you know, they have they they pay they their money's the same as mine. Yeah. So, like now that things are bad, right? Do, do you think that people are going to be harsher toward the homeless or more understanding? I, I think more understanding, my yeah. opinion. Yeah. I think so too. I mean. Yeah. Uh, there's there's, oh, there's so many of them. Instead of people being negative, there should be more help and more compassion for, compassion them. for them. I mean, they're normal people. They have families. They, you know, people are in hard times. I think everyone should be compassionate. Sometimes it seems like them. the city of New London goes out of its way to like hassle homeless people. They're always passing ordinances. And yeah, for that that sh what was that? That shelter down by the uh, by the church there. I guess you couldn't be. It was a dry. Uh, you couldn't be drunk to go spend the night in there. It's, it's, you had to be, it was a, I forget what yeah, it was. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was in the paper a while back. That was, it was what Seto's doing. I read all yeah. that thing in the paper. Uh, what happened in the community as we worked and we worked with other people, both of us uh, worked helping other people. Gail got in a major accident, got hurt, and um, she's had some medical difficulties, ended up having to be cared for. 
So I got, cer it, I got certified to care for her, and, and because of that, what happened was I was able to, I was able to uh, get an income for so many hours of care for her. So when we did community, we started to think we needed more help, and what we did was we, the people who had cared for her for no money, we got certified, and so they were able to gain a little uh, income. And you can only do this uh, for like 25 hours a week for each uh, client. So what happened is all our people, uh, we got them all certified, and, and she was comfortable with all the people who were taking care of her. And so community, community's income, some of the income, lives around Gail. They have a part-time job that's taking care of Gail, who is part of our community. And for the state, it's a great thing because it's far cheaper to keep her in, at home than to put her in a nursing home and, and things like that. And, and so we generate an income from that. So I got my retirement income, and then I get, I have, I work 25 hours a week taking care and cooking for her and doing stuff. That money, okay, that 25 hours a week, most of uh, was. I don't know, a couple of 200. All that goes into the ministry that we donate that money to do the food program. We give over our salaries to pay for the ministry, to pay for the eggs, the bacon, to pay for the transportation of gas that we transport people to jobs or, or appointments for, uh, uh, for medical stuff and everything else. So that's community works. That's somewhat the way we all work around community. So our, our people who earn more take care of that, okay? Gail would never have the service and care that she has if she was in a nursing home or with any other group, okay? Because they all love her. It has the, they were caring for her before there was any money involved. And, and, and when they got the money, they turned most of the money over to do more ministry to feed them. For, as some people say, they, they feed people they don't like down there. They buy the eggs and stuff like that. Shelter is not what I'm about. No, shelter is only temp temporary. We did it full time. They're turning it in, no offense uh, to them, but they're turning it into a livable situation, making it a home. That shelter is should be temporary. My ministry and the direction I believe that God sent me to do was to make permanent residence for these individuals, their own place. Bobby will be the first one moving in here. Bobby's been here with me the longest. He'll be in here, and the way we hope to set this up is that that's it. He will be able to live here for the rest of his life. It's his place, and he will have it the adjusted the way we have the income for him. Will hit whatever his. Uh, earnings will be will be able to maintain his living so he has a safe uh, secure environment for him until he passes on and and it's I want to do it something like rent control like they did in New York but obviously you got to do maintenance and everything it needs to be tied so that any raise goes up with the earnings that the money so that he's able to afford this place because I don't want anybody that comes in here forced to be out on the street that that's the whole idea about what, what what I was doing with the homeless and the direction that they wanted to do it. This is again uh, comes from self determination. So you, it, everything has to be adjusted towards the income of the people who are going to be living here without burdening them so that they can't have a place to live and without you know a tent or anything else like that, and that they don't ever have to go to a shelter. I prefer to be out here. I stay at the shelter from time to time. What makes you go to the shelter? Uh, when I don't have heat, and it's warmer there. When it's real cold, I'll go there, you know. But I prefer to be on the outside because it's less aggravating. I don't have to put up with any of the people out there that comes in there drunk or, you know, high on crack or something So I'm not into drugs. you got people, you ask them, they come in there, they get drunk in there. It's holy help. Yeah, it's true. Pets fights with everybody, and I, I don't like fights. We're brought up with the idea of you get your own space. We have no privacy at the shelter. Our shelter's like a, um, a bunker. You know, it's, it's light and it's airy, but it's, <clears throat> it's cot, chair, cot, chair, cot, chair. It's a large jail cell. You have more, we would have more privacy in a jail cell. You just would. Yeah, there's no privacy right. there. Um, there's no showers there. You, you can't, there's no, you can't cook for yourself. You can't get up at three in the morning and 
be hungry and make yourself a tomato sandwich. It's 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 not a life, you know. It, it's a you know it's a holding pattern that we're trying to get people out of. It's certainly better than um, being out side all day holding these garbage bags since that's your stuff having no place even to put your stuff if you ask me am i led by the holy spirit in the moment what you're describing to me you're asking me am i under the lordship of christ i worked to put myself i gave away everything rejected family take the words follow me literally holy and everything i get up every day going to follow the Spirit. I don't care if this ministry fails. I'm going to do what I believe Christ wants me to do. I don't care. I don't get paid. I don't get it. I'm doing what I believe Christ sent me to do. This is about doing Jesus' ministry and led by the Holy Spirit. If nobody likes it, I, I can't do anything about it. Yes, I am under the Lordship of Christ and, and uh, I, I surrendered to that maybe 16, 17 years ago rather see a person be able to get a little job and make a hundred dollars a week and us help them right. because if you don't have some direction to let people go in you're gonna lose them you're gonna pay anyway so you might well help them so that they continue on even if they only make fifty dollars a week give them credit they're out collecting soda cans give them credit they're trying to make ends right. meet uh, one way or another okay and, and Nick in, in answer to what you were saying Obviously, you see here, many of our folks, we are a family, we've been homeless, and we're going to march in the streets like we did before. Politically, we're not going to go away. Our council people think we're going away. We affected the election last year. Okay, Some people lost because of us. Some people got in because of the three to 600 that Jennifer and the other people have registered. And it's going to get more and more and more people committed. So it's going to affect. One they other, need to do something. One other thing before I leave is they thought by cutting out social services, all the homeless would leave. You would go How wrong <laughs> can they be? <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you, Father Rose. 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 Th
to have faith in God, you know, and that's a real intellectual effort to have faith in God.